back on this 2016 Honda. I explained a little bit about vacuum in the previous video to this. Now I have the system already charged up. And as you can see, I don't know if you could pick it up in the camera, the clicking of the compressor and the engine speed change when it cycles on and off. But if you look at the temperature, this is our suction line. And you, if you can hear the engine RPM and the compressor kicking off and on, you can actually see your reference, the difference between your uh, pressure and your temperature. As the pressure drops, the temperature of the refrigerant inside the line drops. That temperature of the line is this line right here. It's actually, if I went back more towards the evaporator, it would even be colder. I'm already like two and a half feet away, way up here and it's picking up engine heat, raising the temperature. So it's actually a little bit colder than even that. So you would be able to see, and we're a very cold day, as you see where it says ODDB outdoor dry bulb, and that's taken from this temperature out here in front of the condenser. And you can see our liquid line temperature right there. And our liquid line temperature is being taken just after the expansion valve that's with the other sensor i'm actually doing two here's the remote one the bluetooth one but that's being taken with this temperature there is the condenser and this is where i'm taking my temperature now if i move this to the the hot vapor going into the condenser let's see where i could get a hold of that just so i could show you guys as watch it change example and this one is not going to be friendly to me i don't think oh maybe i could grab it uh not too friendly it's right there i cannot easily get a clamp maybe i might be able to get a clamp right there and show you the temperature in while coming out we know the temperature coming out is 69 70 degrees right there llt liquid line temperature and i've showed other videos this but i'm going to take a little time out and uh, give you another little demo uh, if I could get I'm not sure I'm getting my best I'm being hit up a little bit that might cock my sensor a little bit so let's see what it, we're doing here so we're 82 degrees from roughly 70 degrees so we got a 12 degree 13 degree drop but in this situation we have pulsating fans so we also have fans that are not steady and this is one of the problems when you're trying to read superheat and subcooling. When you're on a system that has pulsating fans or it has one of the, with the varying fans or the one where it kick one fan on and then another fan on. When you have those condenser manufacturers who are aftermarket, I've heard this come out of their mouth. It's like diarrhea. Uh, they have the tenacity to actually say, that oh if you get one of our condensers uh you just have to reduce the uh charge and watch your superheat or subcooling unless you only do one make one model vehicle and you know it really really good and even then it would change too much you cannot be grabbing different condensers on it and getting to charge right every time trying to set your charge with fans that are pulsating on and off a compressor pulsating on and off and if you're especially in your body shop I, I can't believe these guys who sell these condensers from these big companies giving you bullshit um, it's 50 some degrees out today you cannot set your superheater sub cooling on a 50 some degree day the thing won't even stay on no more than like five seconds seven seconds right now and they're telling you to adjust charge that's bullshit either they can produce a part that puts out the same exact uh, heat rejection as the OEM or get your shit off the market and um, that's end of story right there so getting back to this here's our temperature we're now up, now we're, we're picking up a, a, a better temperature here right off my uh, line we got 85 degrees hot vapor going into the condenser but our 
pressure is being read way over here on the liquid line after the condenser and its restrictions in its property. Even though we have 93 PSI, it would be nice if we had another high side pressure valve located right here at the intake so you could get this true pressure temperature relationship. Uh, depending on where you have the high side valve, will one depend whether or not you can tell a condenser is partially restricted. So partially restricted is harder to determine than fully restricted. Fully restricted or really greatly restricted is easy to confirm. Well, especially if you have an infrared camera, you just hit it with the infrared camera and you can see the cool tube, so it's easy. Uh, but using pressure method is really bad to try to use on a partially restricted condenser when your high side service valve is completely after the condenser. Now, if you were able to put one, one before and one before and one after, that would be great. Or one before. If I had a high side pressure valve at the inlet and say this was like 90% plugged up and it was a hot 90 degree day and I turned the system on and I had this high side fitting located at the inlet, the top of the condenser, you would see 400 PSI and then you'd see uh, go over 400 and then you'd see the safety kick in and the clutch kick out. Then you'd see it kick on and go 400 PSI almost immediately if it was all stopped up and plugged in the first few tubes. But you take that same high side service fitting and put it after the plug and you put it way over here and it's not a complete plug, you can have a situation where you can still have a hundred and some PSI over here and but you're hitting 400 over here and i've seen a lot of guys trying to guess on with little cans and a single hose how to fill up a system that has a plug condenser and they they're not figuring out why they don't know they have 400 psi on that they just know it's not cooling and the clutch is kicking off and on and they go oh it must be really low because the clutch is cycling really fast so let's throw in some more refrigerant you guys who are experienced know what's wrong with that scenario Love those little cans with the little jerk off gauge and whacking off, putting in a little can and a hose. Um, what else can I go over here while I'm sitting around spinning my thumbs? Uh, that's about it. Uh, I think I'll cock up here because um, I'm getting text messages that somebody wants me to come and ask me why am I not at their shop right now because I'm taking videos for you guys. Uh, that's the problem with this. All right, guys, see you later. I got to get my butt out of here and go make some money.